Well, I want to share a few thoughts about dreams and visions that every Christian needs to be made aware of. God speaks through dreams and visions. Satan speaks through dreams and visions. And when we have a dream that we feel might be from God, we want to, as soon as possible, seek God in prayer asking him, if this dream was from you, what am I to do about it? What is my responsibility, in other words? If there is any. I was out this morning uh, availing myself to witness to be used of the Lord, uh, passing out real life story testimony books, um, and just being there however the Lord might want to use me. And he put me in contact with a lady. And she shared some things that just has motivated me to feel that I am to say something. Uh, there, there was a conversation that happened over the phone yesterday where I was made aware of another situation, both involving dreams. And I have come to realize that Christians need to be aware of what's going on when we are talking about dreams and visions. First and foremost, let me tell you that Scripture tells us that God speaks to us in dreams. But Scripture doesn't tell us that Satan speaks to us in dreams and visions as well if we're not careful. And so some people totally dismiss that this is also or can be a playground of Satan to deceive us. So we need to be aware of both sides of who's uh, behind the dream and or the vision that we have received. Let me read from you from the book of Job, if you're not familiar with this. Book of Job, chapter uh, 33. Uh, it's kind of right out of context of <laughs> the book of Job, but God puts in information throughout the Bible and you have to know where to find it. Um, Let's start with verse 14. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumber on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Now, the context in which this is given, I should make mention of in verse 17, uh, in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from a man, uh, he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Now that <laughs> addresses a whole different area than what I feel God wants me to talk about. But many times God will communicate to us before he drops a hammer on us, so to speak, and before strong discipline and chastisement is about to come our way, when we are just walking in disobedience, when our spiritual ears are plugged up with wax, and or we just got earmuffs on, so to speak, and we don't want to hear what God has to say, okay? But the point is, God does communicate with us many times in dreams and more Christians with visions. And there are two sides to the dreams, possibly three, but let's keep it simple. God sometimes is revealing to us something that's going to happen in the near future sometimes to prepare us for probably some trauma that's about to come our way. And that's how most Christians perceive dreams of that nature. But there's another side to it that so many Christians are not aware of. And that's what I really feel God wants me to uh, inform some Christians 
there's another reason that God gives us dreams. And I'm going to share the testimony of how this transcended earlier today. I ran into this gal. We made small talk. I don't know her hardly at all. But she got opening up to me about how she has, in the last couple of years, had to uh, deal with five deaths. A couple were her family members, her kids in fact, committed suicide, hung themselves in both occasions. wasn't on the same day. Maybe it was three, I'm not exactly sure. Might have been three who committed suicide in her immediate family. I think two for sure were just loved ones. Loved ones somewhere along the family line, maybe friends, but it's incidental. And she shared how she almost suffered a near break, mental breakdown from it, and was getting some doctoring and some help for it. And, and of course, they're wanting to give her medication, one doctor, and on three different medications at one time, and they weren't working together. And so it basically sounded to me like she's a guinea pig, and let's try something, see if it works. And uh, so she's gone off of that good for her, not to say that it wouldn't help her, but she shared in one of these suicides with a son of hers, teenage son, she woke up in the middle of the night and uh, she said, I had this dream that he was going to kill himself. He was going to hang himself. And I woke my husband up and I said, honey, I, God just gave me this dream. And uh, I believe God showed me that this is what's going to happen to prepare us for what's about to happen. Our son's going to kill himself. He's going to hang himself. She said, well, my husband said, oh, honey, God, no, you've had too much peach or something or something. I don't think he's going to kill himself. Go to sleep. Go back to bed. You know, don't worry about it. Well, that afternoon, they got the notification that her son hung himself, killed himself, and it was devastating to say the least. And she said, she said, see, I tried to tell you God told me it was going to happen so that he was preparing us for what was going to happen a few hours later. And I felt, oh, 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 oh. There may have been some truth to that. I'm not going to judge that. But I just felt so much of the Holy Spirit to say something that I didn't know how to say it in that moment in time because she's looking for comfort, uh, not instruction, but I felt to have to say something to her. I, her name was Sue, and I said, Sue, you know, there's another side to dreams that I'm not sure you're aware of. Well, what's that? Well, many times God will give us a dream, especially about a loved one, somebody close to us. He'll give us a dream so that we will start interceding and praying that Satan will not be allowed to kill this person or bring great harm to that person or persons. It's not that it's going to happen and God is giving me some insight to prepare me for when it does happen. He needs at least one person praying that Satan's attack upon this individual or this situation might be yourself, might be your loved one, husband, wife, whatever. Satan, God is saying, look, I'm aware Satan is planning to do this and I'm giving you a heads up, asking you to pray and maybe even fast so that he's not allowed to do it. But I'm showing you this because I'm expecting you to take preemptive warfare strategy, go into prayer, binding, loosening, warring, as you know how to do, so this will not happen. And she didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And I know it didn't set well, but hopefully she's got some understanding. She said, well, I've been a Christian for all my life, years. I never heard that. Well, I've found out a lot of Christians are not in the circles where they hear that there's two sides to when God gives people dreams and sometimes visions. Many times it's for warning. Yeah, okay, but not just to sit and let it happen. Warning so that you'll pray and intercede to try to stop what the devil wants to do in that situation. So just take that for what it's worth. Now, I want to tell you how Satan works. 
I'm very close to a situation that I was made privy to over the phone. I'm going to not identify who it was, but it's ver people very close. And they have three sons, and one of the sons has walked very close to God. They're teenagers. And one has walked incredibly close to God the last few years, seems to be the most spiritually sensitive, spiritually mature of the three, not to compare the other two, but it seems to be that's the way it is, or has been. And uh, so this, this uh, teenage boy, he's mid-high school, he, he comes to his parents next morning and says, Mom, Dad, I got to tell you something. God gave me a full-blown dream about a kid being kidnapped in Mexico, and he's crying out for help, and God is asking me, he told me, he says, I want you to go down and rescue this kid before evil breaks forth. And uh, I want you to go down and rescue this kid before worse evil comes upon him. Well, lives in Chicago, Illinois. He doesn't drive, he doesn't have access to a car, doesn't have his driver's license yet, so he goes to mom and dad and says, this is a dream God gave us, gave me, and it's my responsibility. God wants me to go rescue this kid. Well, the parents are in tune with the Lord, and they said, son, um, we don't think that's of God. And the, and the boy, what do you mean it's not of God? That was God. Said, no. That was the devil trying to trick you, con you, and us, because we'd have to take you down there. We'd have to come try to rescue you if you get kidnapped down there. It's happening all the time, and hey, we'll give you your kid back. You give us this much ransom payment, you know. Uh, it's happening. And so we just don't feel this is of God. Well, the boy got offended, and he says, well, uh, it's on my shoulders, it's my responsibility, and you're stopping that. You're going to have to answer to God for this. I said, well, if it's not of God, no, we aren't, and we don't believe it's God. So they're at an impasse where he doesn't want to talk to them, and he does not want, you know, he just can't deal with this because I've heard from God, this is what i got to do, and what's your problem, Mom and Dad? You can't hear from God. So the devil is constantly using these tactics, if you let him, to disrupt family relationships. He's looking to put family relationships and wedges between children and kids and kids and children, you know, parents and friends and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Satan can give us, if God allows, full-blown supernatural dreams and visions that are counterfeits, tricking us to think they're of God, which can lead us down a path of woe and pain that we God doesn't want us going down. So my friend, be aware there's two sides to dreams and visions. Sometimes God is speaking to us. I know I go way back when I first became saved, became born again, there was a lot of evil going on in the situation. I uh, won't get into the specifics, but God was giving me dreams constantly. But I didn't understand what it all meant. And it was years later I come to realize God speaks many times in dreams and visions in picture form. And we have to get up, get awake, be alert, and ask God, give me revelation of what that dream was about. And I think probably he does that so we're not confused. We are consciously alert, fully alert, discerning with our mind uh, to discern clearly what he's trying to communicate in that. Well, Satan will give you those dreams too. And you have to just go to God and say, God, if this was of you, show me what you're trying to communicate to me. If it was the devil, Reveal to me how he's trying to trap me and make life worse for me. Okay, that's our responsibility. Um, so God doesn't always speak clearly in the dream. This is what I want you to do. I don't want you to do this. Whatever he does sometimes, but many times he speaks to us in symbolic form, like parables, if you will.
And we have to go to him and say, well, give me the understanding of that parable. Give me understanding of this dream. And what does it mean from you? And um, after some years have gone by, God has not had to give me dreams to reveal evil that Satan was intending to launch against me sometimes hours later, a day or two or three. Share your dream with trusted Christians and let them have an opportunity to tell you, I think that was of God. You need to ask him what that all means. Or, I'm not sure that dream was from God. See, God will many times speak through one or more Christians, giving them a witness to keep us from having our faith shipwrecked to some degree or another. And Satan is constantly looking for ways to deceive us, to try to hinder <clears throat> our relationship with God. That's just the games he plays. And we need to be as wise as we can be to discern especially when supernatural things are happening. It just seems like it's so much more credible when supernatural things are happening. Well, this just must be of God. And Satan always tries to make it look like it's from God so he doesn't get caught at being the one behind it. Well, thank you for listening to that. And uh, I pray that it will help you as you continue uh, walking with the Lord on down to the remainder of your life.